how to draft patent claims. If you like my videos, do me a favor and subscribe to my channel. In this video, I explain how to draft patent claims. In this video, I first talk about some general considerations when drafting patent claims. Then I talk about five essential steps when drafting patent claims. After that, I talk about 12 common mistakes when drafting patent claims. And in the end, I give you my favorite strategy how to draft patent claims. First, some general considerations. How can you prove if a patent claim is infringed? Always have infringement in mind when drafting patent claims. For example, if you want to draft a complex mixture of polymers in your independent claim, then you have to be sure that you can prove this particular mixture of polymers in an infringing product. Otherwise, the claim is basically useless. Then another general consideration is, can the claims easily be circumvented or avoided by infringers? Always have the infringer in mind when drafting patent claims. What would you tell the infringer how to get around the patent claim that you are just about to draft? Now for the five basic steps how to draft patent claims. What is the invention? What are all the pieces and parts of the invention? What are all the details of the invention? Are there multiple versions of the invention? First, you really need to understand the invention in great detail and understand how the invention works from the very start to the very finished product. Try to identify as many variations of the invention, even if the inventor didn't tell you or give you a hint or clue about the different variations of the invention. Then the second step, search for prior art. Do a really good, clever search for prior art and try to identify as many differences of your invention to the solutions that are given in each of these documents. Then there is the two-part form of the claims, which I recommend. There is the preamble. The preamble is the most generic form of your invention. For example, a car or a hairdryer or a composition or any generic form that best describes your invention. And then there is the body. Try to identify one feature that differentiates your invention from all the found relevant documents. Or at least try to find a combination of features as broad as possible that distinguishes your invention from the relevant documents that you found. And this feature goes into the body. For example, a car, characterized in that, and then the body, it comprises wheels made of diamond. Of course, I think a useless invention, but nevertheless, the distinguishing feature would be the wheels made of diamond. Then a fourth step, make sure that all features in the claims are connected, physically or logically. If the elements or features in your claims are not physically or logically connected, the examiner might object to your set of claims for not disclosing one uniform invention and raise an objection with lack of unity. So you might have to elect a certain set of claims to further prosecute that set of claims and you would be forced to file a divisional application for the other inventions. Then the fifth step. Did you make use of all different types of claims? Do you have a product claim? Do you have a process claim? Do you have a use claim? For example, you can claim a certain product, then the process for the manufacture of that product, and then the use of that product in a certain application. Now let's go to the 12 most common mistakes in my view. Sometimes I see claims made of more than one sentence. Do not have more than one sentence in any claim. Otherwise it will be objected as unclear and it will be difficult to enforce. Then there is the misuse of the word AND. If you have a list of different components, for example, you have um, a motor comprising this and this and this component, then you use the word AND only before the last component. The third common mistake. 
There are different transitional phrases between the preamble and the body, for example, characterized in that, or consisting of, or comprising of, or having, or being composed of. Characterized in that is the most common transitional phrase and perfectly okay to divide the preamble from the body. If you use consisting of, then you have a very narrow scope because the following list will be a closed list and if the infringer has any additional elements, they might be out of the scope of your patent. Comprising or being comprised of on the other hand, is an open list. So you have components A, B and C in your list. And even if the infringer has any additional elements, they will still fall under the scope of your claim. So prefer comprising over consisting of. Then there are other transitional phrases like having or being composed of. And these phrases, at least in the US and sometimes also in Europe, are objected to for being unclear, so just avoid them. Then a very important and common mistake, inconsistent terminology. Always use the exact same term for the same concept. For example, do not use car and automobile interchangeably to mean the same concept. Then another mistake is claiming the result. Try to avoid claiming the result as opposed to the components or the concepts to achieve the result. While claiming the result may be allowable in exceptions, typically it is objected to for being unclear. Then another mistake is too little detail. Don't leave anything out of the claim that is necessary to work the invention and distinguish the invention from the prior art. Then another mistake is too much detail in the claim. Try to avoid any features that are not necessary to work the invention and to distinguish the invention from the prior art. If you have more than these features, your claim will be more narrow than it should be. Another mistake, try to avoid claims that broaden the independent claim or contradict the independent claim. The next mistake, Try to avoid using trademarks in the claims. Then another mistake, which is just a personal view, it is not a general recommendation. I typically try to avoid means plus function claims. Why? Some colleagues in the US recommend means plus function claims because you can get a jury to decide on claim interpretation. However, sometimes courts interpret means plus function claims in a very narrow sense limited to the options that are given in the description to reach the function. Then the last and twelfth mistake that I want to talk about the antecedent basis. If you first introduce a feature in the claims use the indefinite article like e or n and if you refer to the same concept, the same feature later on in the set of claims, on the same claim, use the definite article, the. Now for my personal strategy how to get a good set of claims. First do a very good search for prior art. For each of these documents, try to identify as many differences to your invention as possible and also try to identify the advantage that is connected with each of these differences. Then try to identify the broadest feature that you can find that differentiates your invention from all of the relevant documents that you found and use that feature in the body of the claim. I have some valuable resources and links in the show notes for drafting claims. I hope I was able to explain how to draft claims. If you are new to my channel and want to keep updated about patents, trademarks and designs, subscribe to my channel. If you like my videos, hit like. I am answering questions in the comments below this video and most importantly, protect your intellectual property and go make it count.